Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so I have Sherry Sterling Fernandez on the line, and she is a personal development coach at Life Mastery. Sherry, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Glad to be here. All right, Sherry. So I'm excited to get into today's topic. So for those that have been listening to this show for a long time, you know that I love supporting authors. I love promoting great books, and uh, I love bringing them on to tell them to tell us, you know, about their content, why they created it, and really what we can all learn and gain from it. And I like helping people share books and uh, and, and sell them as well. So uh, we'll be leaving contact info at the end of this, of course, because we want you to pick up a copy of Life Mastery. Um, but just to get us kicked off. Uh, Sherry, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Sherry, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for our entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Sherry, what mission matters to you? Well, it just so happens I do have a, a, a mission that I'm, I work towards this every day, I hope, and it's to use all my knowledge, my wisdom, my personal power, and every other talent that I possess to inspire everyone within my reach to live with purpose, passion, faith, and to move confidently towards their infinite potential. And, of course, I use a life mastery program to do that. Fantastic. Uh, Love bringing on mission-based individuals to share their their content and, you know, why they do what they do and really what we can all learn from that so that we can all grow together. So, again, great to have you on. Um, Let's just dive right in here. Like, tell me a little bit more about how you got on this path to really helping people in this personal development, um, in this personal development space. How did you get started? Um, Well, you know, I I first, after I wrote the book, one of the... um, uh, People were advertising the book, and they, were, they said, there's Sherry's Rags to Riches story. And I was like, oh, Rags, that's kind of a dramatic. And I thought, no, really, that's really what it was. We just, mm. my husband and I both, would, we got married, and we were like, we wanted so much, but we had wasted away our our education years. All of a sudden, we're 22, 23. All we've done is parties after that point. <laughs> and we're like, okay, now we want some things, and we could hardly feed ourselves and our children. And so I went to work just trying to figure out, I had no disciplines at all, totally undisciplined, I went to work trying to figure out how is it somebody gets to be successful and educating myself on that. And the more I learned, uh, the more people saw the changes in me. I mean, it was over years, so I didn't stop like in six weeks. But as the years progressed, people were noticing how far and how fast we were progressing in our own lives, financially, our relationships, just the things that we were doing. And I began to be asked to teach a class here or speak there and mostly for free <laughs> in those days. Um, and I did that, and then the more I did that, the more I refined what I was learning, is I had to teach it, right? You you learn better when you're teaching something, and the more I practiced those things, and the more success we got. And it just ultimately led to me doing one-on-one coaching, and of course I still do some speaking and workshops and some things like that. But it was not a, that, I mean, it sounded like it was a short journey. I mean, it was this is over the course of some decades, right? But we really were a rags to riches story. Yeah, I, I love I, what I love about this story too. And uh, I wasn't going to date it, but this is over the course of decades. Like this is yeah. like work. And when I think about yeah, and when I think about this, I mean, for me, like that that's beneficial because that means that I see some of the you know some of the acclaim that you received from the book. So I mean, you featured New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today. I mean, it's a bestseller, so it's definitely. Um, been widely received. I feel like when a book in this space or this niche can kind of break through the crowd and, and can, that there's usually something special behind it. Well, there's a lot of things. I'm not discrediting anybody else's work. I mean, everybody works hard, but um, especially just to do a book. I mean, as a publisher, I can say to complete a book is not easy, and I commend anyone that even tries. <laughs> it's just not an easy thing. Um, so, you know, when I see one, though, that starts to kind of break through the noise, um, I, I think I always, it always kind of catches my attention, like, oh, here goes something new. Here goes something uh, that, that's going to do a lot of good for people. What has been your experience as you've been on this um, on this authorship path? Like, like how how is the how is the let's just say how's the the book publishing and promo and all that? How's that been treating you? Oh, I, it's been a really great adventure, and I've just met uh, well podcasters. Every interview I've been on, I've just enjoyed everyone and the meeting 
I think you guys are all trying to make a difference out there. So that's been super fun. The process of getting the book ready, the cover, I love. We talked about that earlier. I really love the cover of the book, and Authors Unite were really good to me. And just all along the way, it's just been one. I mean, there's, I'm not saying there hasn't been some bumps, you know. There's been some times that it's been very frustrating. But the whole, as I look over the process, the whole process is just, I never, I never inspired, was never aspired to write a book. I just, at once, it just the moment came, and one more time I had been asked, and I've always said in the past, I don't want to write a book, I'm not a writer. And then all of a sudden it was just time and I felt inspired that I should write it. So right from the beginning, it felt like a, a just a new journey and an inspired journey. And I felt like the right people have been there at the right moment. And it's been awesome. It's been a really good experience. Hmm. Well, tell me a little bit more about some of the feedback you've gotten from this. Like, um, what, 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 what is the response then? Well, you know, when you read a book like this, it requires something of you. <laughs> Some people mm-hmm. either love it or they don't finish it. I think that's probably about the size like a book like this. But the feedback's mm-hmm. been good. I think I hear a lot of things like it's been – it's readable. Uh, it rings true. And it, I think that's one of the things that's unique about my book. Not totally unique always, but more unique than most is that this is – these are principles that I've lived. And I've lived them and found success. I've taught them, helped other people find success. I didn't go and research or something my life has been that research and my the teaching things I've been teaching successfully was my research. So that's, uh, and I hear people say that's why it feels authentic to them and real and like something that they can do because they see where I came and how I did it and how I went about it. Um, and then I think a lot of people like the the fact that I give them something to do. When I was trying to figure out how you'd be successful, I read lots of books and all the classics, Thinking Go Rich and Zig Ziglar and all those people they didn't give me a thing to do, <laughs> you know. The only thing get successful, here you can be successful, you can have all of this, you know, go get them. I got lots of motivation. I love all of that. But I said, just give me a starting point and that I offer that starting point when I when I coach, when I speak in the book. I give you some place to start if you really want it. And I think that's been it. I get a lot of feedback on it, especially the tracking sheets. People request them frequently from me, which I give away freely on the website. Tell me about the kind of the construction. I noticed it's a three-part book, so why, what, how? Like, tell me a little bit more about what went into that. Well, you know, anybody in personal development world, we have to all talk about why, right? It's really important when yeah. you're going to go about doing something. Good, know what do, you, what do you want? Why do you want it? You know, what is it your why to to be um, to move forward and to move towards your infinite potential? One fundamental why is we'd like to be happy, and when we progress, we're happy, and when we don't, we're not. So that you know, just the beginning point. We're happier when we're moving forward, and being stuck is depression, anxiety, unhappiness. Um, and then I give some other whys. And then we can develop our whys by the things we'd like to accomplish in life, a mission statement, which you asked for mine earlier, uh, a governing values, things we want to be, things we want to have, things we want to do. So uh, the first section is on developing our why. And you have to have a pretty strong why because there's a lot of day-to-day work, right? We talked about over decades. Um, not that you don't see some success quicker than that, but it really is a lifelong approach. And so day to day it can be like, why am I doing this? Well, you've got to have that strong why. And then what What? What should I work on? And if it's so much of this literature is written towards business or money, but we want more than that, right? The relationships, we want to be well-educated, we want to have a lifestyle, we want spirituality, we want to live a full, well-rounded life. So what, and I, there's eight things that I offer that, and I just offer some ideas. I don't write a comprehensive just to get get people thinking about this area of life. Here's some ideas, and here's some ideas. I just give a little bit of you know things to think about in each of those eight areas. That's the what, part two. And then part three is the how. And, of course, that's where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> if somebody's going to give up, they're going to give up there because, it, you know, it's about how to – but, you know, the, if I get a chance to speak and talk, choose my own topic, my favorite topic is why systems are more important than goals. And that's why people fall short, is they don't have good systems. And so part three is about systems you can employ to help you make your goals happen. We just get busy and we kind of forget we've got them, right? If you don't have a good system that's going for you, that you're using all the time, you just sort of lose track of what you want to accomplish. So part three is about systems and how to plug your goals into systems. 
Yeah, that's, all, that's great. If there was, and I know there's plenty, so I don't want this to seem like a, an unfair question because I don't mean it to be loaded. I know when we could talk about, you know, we could do a whole series on your book. But, you know, within the context of, of a podcast interview, only so much you can squeeze in, right? And who knows, maybe I'll be able to talk you into hosting a show for our network now that I think about it because you got <laughs> a lot to say, I feel like. Um, so that being said, uh, like if there were some takeaways or some keys that you'd say, like if there was only a few that you that you want the readers to walk away from after digesting this book, um, what would those be? Well, it, I think two right come to mind immediately. One is that if you want to, we had a lot of fuss over the last few years, right? We had the the COVID and everybody had an opinion, and we had Black Lives Matter and everybody had an opinion, and we've got politics, everybody has an opinion. Whether you want to change the world or change your relationships or or change the way you live, whatever you want to see different in the world, it always comes back to the same thing. You work on you. We want to force change on other people, organizations out there. We'd like to demand change, but we can't do that. We can't change anything but ourselves. But when we change ourselves, we change everything. And if we all went to work on ourselves, everything would be better, right? So the key to changing whatever you want to see happen in the world, is to work on yourself. So that would be one takeaway. And then the other one is that this is the way to be happy. It really is. We we are designed for really great things. And I I feel a, a sadness when I see so many people falling, not accomplishing the things that they want to do. And I'm in my, I'm 67. Uh, so at my age, a lot of long time, people I've known for a really long time, and I see them now feeling, dis- a lot of them, not everybody, of course, but I see a lot of people feeling disappointment about what they didn't do, and there's only usually regret when what we didn't do. There's not that much, not frequently regret what we did do, because at least you learned something, right, um, that people are living with regret. So the world is full and despair, and there's so much out there to do and be and see and accomplish um, that each of us just should get out there and get all we can. And, and again, it comes back to working on ourselves, and that's what makes us happy. So those would be two things, I think. All right. Well said, Sherry, and uh, and, and I'll say, like, I, I'm looking forward to hearing and seeing more from you. I know this book is a culmination of mu- much of the work um, that you've done in your life, and I know you're helping individuals still through your personal development coaching. Um, so at the end of this, I'm going to give you um, a moment to, you know, to leave any contact information or things like that um, so that people can follow up and connect, but uh, but just so that we make sure that the right types of individuals or whether it's industry, um, how far along they are in their career, or, or maybe there isn't. These aren't qualifiers, but I want to know who are typically the types of individuals or organizations that get the most value out of working with you and your team? Uh, a lot of my clients tend to be entrepreneurs. I think that they they don't get the personal development in in a business environment that they they might. There's nobody out there working for them or developing them. They have to develop themselves. So people who uh, and that was me. Um, I didn't have anybody in my corner. So some of you need somebody to give them some direction. I find my clients are typically people who they've got all these things. They feel like there's something out there. They've got all these ideas. They just need some help. And narrowing it down. So I think anybody who wants to achievement as a human being, as a person moving forward in all business or fitness or all those areas, they just want to be more than they are now and they need some direction. That would be, that would be my audience. I think that's what you're asking me. Um, mm-hmm. Those would be the people that are, are drawn. That's so uh, that's, it's the book that I and the program I wish I'd had when I was in my twenties. I had to go figure out for myself. Um, so I guess I, my heart goes to those kind of people. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So, Sherry, if somebody wants to follow up and to learn more and connect with you and your team, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, we have a website. Just change websites, and I think it's all the new ones all live and ready to go. Uh, That's uh, lifemasteryinfo.com. And I'm Sherry, that's H-E-R-R-Y, at lifemasteryinfo.com. And I'm very accessible. People email me and contact me. I always respond. So you can email me at that, Sherry Sherry at lifemasteryinfo.com. And I will return that call. Of course, we're on social media, um, mm-hmm. Life Mastery uh, Mentoring on Facebook. And <laughs> I think it's, I don't do Instagram myself. I You're all over the place. It was easy. Stuff. It was easy. <laughs> Yeah, it was so easy for me to find you, and and I want everybody to and I want everybody to pick up a copy of that book too. I just typed in life mastery, and I put in Sherry Fernandez. We'll put a link in the show notes as well, but definitely go pick up a copy of that book. Um, and I just want it's to also say, also available on audio as well. 
Oh, yes, on absolutely. Audible. I noticed that. So you have it on Audible. You have it. I know it was just really simple. So it's Kindle, Audible, hardcover, paperback. You want it, you got it. Sherry's, Sherry, yep. you get some, it's an awesome product, and it's an awesome uh, everything. The cover, the layout, the, everything else. I mean, it was really well done. So um, I definitely want my readers to go pick up a, a copy of that. And uh, speaking of our listeners, if this if you're listening to this episode and this is the first time you're tuning into Mission Matters, we're all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, and experts, and having them share their their goals, their mission, you know, their their businesses, why they do what they're doing, how they're doing it, and really what we can all learn from that so that we can grow and thrive together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or inviting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Sherry, really, it has been a pleasure. Really appreciate you coming on the show. It has, Adam. You have an awesome program, and just I love it. So thank you so much for having me.